Rock Creek Ranch embraces 10,400 acres of land in a series of succulent meadows surrounded by miles upon miles of good quality rangeland below the shadow of the Smoky Mountains in Blaine County. The ranch is home to sage grouse, a species of concern, as well as moose, elk, deer, antelope, and other critters. Because of its dual qualities as a working ranch with strong conservation values, Rock Creek Ranch was purchased recently from the Rinker family by the Wood River Land Trust and the Nature Conservancy in a unique partnership with the University of Idaho. Under the partnership, the University of Idaho provides a cow-calf cattle herd from its Nancy M. Cummings Research and Education Center in Salmon for rangeland-related research. The 850-acre Cummings Ranch is all irrigated pasture. Rock Creek offers an opportunity to do research on a ranch with true rangeland setting. Things about this, it's a great station. We can do a lot of good research here. But one of the things that we've always lacked has been a range component. And so that meant our system of production was not really relevant to the majority of the industry, which relies on range at least five to six months out of the year. So the Rock Creek Ranch gave us an, just a wonderful opportunity to expand our research and make our research more industry relevant. Again, a great outcome of, or a great part of this project is the research that's taking place and we hope to continue to encourage and will take place in the future. And we don't have that opportunity on many of our projects. So being able to partner with the University of Idaho, the Nature Conservancy prides itself on using science to guide our conservation work. So actually having a project, a ranch, working with the university where we could do really good research uh, is important to us. Public education programs at the ranch, like Sagebrush Saturdays, also provide a window into the benefits of good stewardship. Rock Creek Ranch also hosted the Western National Rangeland Career Day event for high school students learning about range management. Students from multiple Western states participate. During a full day in the field, they worked on things like plant identification, evaluating habitat for wildlife and livestock, and making recommendations for future management. The PVs have been able to so successfully do, you know, with the trailing of the sheep. There's a big component of that too. If people can understand what it means to have cattle on those lands and how they can be managed in a way that benefits the, the, the grass regrowth, uh, the, the fire pr uh, prevention, uh, all the, the things that are maybe not understood at first, first blush, and probably, more importantly, get good information out there, yeah. you know, what they think is you know, overgrazing and what it actually means to graze it properly, right. you know, and how that's a healthier system for all. Karen Launchbaugh, director of the University of Idaho Rangeland Center, describes the new collaborative research opportunities at Rock Creek. Well, it's, it's really a brand new idea. Uh, it, it really kind of came out of just a lot of efforts that uh, really came together and really is, is a, a mix of people's ideas about what should be done on landscapes, the science and the education right there to see if it works. So uh, to me, that's what's really unique about it is this combination of science and education and a lot of voices weighing into that and helping us figure out how to do this at a landscape scale. It's a brand new idea. At one time, the Rinkers were looking at building a subdivision there, with up to 2,000 residential units west of Haley. But that idea didn't bode well with locals in Blaine County. The Rinkers decided to withdraw their development proposal and focused on selling the ranch. Along the way, ranch broker Trent Jones who also is a board member on the Wood River Land Trust, started to discuss the possibility of a conservation outcome with the Rinker family. Maybe there's some, maybe there's a way to generate some funding through far, the uh, Grasslands Reserve Program, which is being administered by NRCS. Maybe there's some, you know, maybe there's some other public entities another public entity that could bring money to, to the table, maybe the land trust in cooperation with other private partners could raise funds. Um, um, and then, you know, as, 
and then also looking to the Rinker family, maybe if this is an out, if this is this kind of conservation outcome, which could really be a legacy after so many years here in the valley, a legacy for the family, maybe there's something that the family could contribute beyond just, just creating the opportunity. The Rinkers were open to the concept. Bart's dad, Harry Rinker, had been a very successful developer in California, building subdivisions gas stations, and shopping centers. Harry Rinker came to Sun Valley to vacation early on and also developed some successful housing developments in the Wood River Valley, including the Golden Eagle Ranch and Gimlet. Not long after, uh, it started to come to uh, uh, kind of a collaborative effort uh, uh, with other people in the, in the county, uh, Scott with the land uh, land trust uh, and and Trent, who is also associated with the land trust, but still representing us as a as a, our our representative on selling the property, uh, it came to light that there may be some other benefits that we could benefit from, as well as uh, the county itself, the land trust, the Nature Conservancy, you know, all of that. Trent Jones and Bart Rinker engaged with the Natural Resources Conservation Service to explore the concept of selling easements to the agency through the Grassland Reserve Program. The robust sage-grouse populations and premium habitat at the ranch made it a good fit. The magnitude of the property is, is significant. We've never even come close to you know, protecting something that large. We didn't have anything close to the, the money that was necessary to acquire this ranch. Even with the the significant deduction or reduction in, in asking price that the, the rinkers wanted, it was because of the NRC easement, the sage grouse protection of the GRP easement, that allowed us to, to generate most of the money that was necessary to acquire the property. So we borrowed money uh, in conjunction with working with the Nature Conservancy to make it happen. They were true partners. Our name was on the title, but without their support, we couldn't have, we couldn't have done this. And the Nature Conservancy works throughout uh, the United States and we've had a chapter here in Idaho for a long time. We have the Silver Creek Project which is nearby. Uh, we've got a you know, 30 plus year history, 40 year history here in the Wood River Valley. So again, big project. The Land Trust is a, you know, a, a smaller land trust organization so it was great for the two of us to be able to partner uh, and we were able to bring some resources um, to the project along with the Land Trust to make it work. It was a time to also to, to uh, reflect and give back to the, you know, to the valley. And uh, that was also a very, very important part of our decision. And then discussions turned toward the concept of partnering with the University of Idaho to do research and education. So more conversation and thinking about it, and it just seemed like a perfect pairing to be able to actually give the university a true rangeland setting and help us move forward with our vision for the ranch. Lori Likely, former board president of the Idaho Cattle Association, was instrumental in persuading legislators and the University of Idaho about the partnership at Rock Creek Ranch. Another positive aspect that occurred was that Wyatt Prescott, former executive vice president of the Idaho Cattle Association, was hired to manage cattle operations at the ranch for research and education. Prescott speaks about the ranch's potential at a Sagebrush Saturdays event. That's a lot of what the management program is here, is trying to figure out how the personality is, and to do those developments to where we can use ranching and use cattle as a conservation tool and a working landscape tool and not just a beef production tool. My passion about this project is there's going to be a number of, of research projects done out here from the university's um, perspective to look at how we do that better. How do we use those cattle and livestock better as a tool for conservation? So it's not good enough for me as a rancher, as a cattle consultant, to say that we can conserve wildlife habitat and we can ranch a few cows. We have to strive to find production techniques that both enhance the amount of beef that we can produce on this landscape, but also enhance the amount of conservation wildlife habitat we can produce on this landscape both. 
Management, research, and education functions at Rock Creek Ranch are overseen not only by the Wood River Land Trust, the Nature Conservancy, and the University of Idaho, but also by a diverse advisory committee, including the Idaho Cattle Association, NRCS, Central Idaho Rangeland Network, Idaho Soil and Water Conservation Commission, Idaho Rangeland Resource Commission, Idaho Fish and Game, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The University of Idaho Rangeland Center brings together the research functions of the UI College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and the UI College of Natural Resources at Rock Creek. Rangeland studies and education at the University of Idaho have always been held in the College of Natural Resources and the College of Agriculture. And uh, this ranch gives us a chance to just work right together, side by side, on the same project. The Rock Creek Ranch deeded lands, combined with another 11,000 acres of BLM grazing allotments, encompass a whole watershed. It is one that it is a whole watershed. We don't get that chance very often, that, but that gives us a lot of understanding of management and, uh, and research, what that happens at a watershed scale. So that's unique. The placement of Rock Creek is also really close, right in the middle of Idaho. And then the third thing that is unique and, and makes it just a really Idaho example is that mix of private and federal and state lands. So it is a pretty good uh, kind of uh, postcard of what Idaho ranches and, and ranching looks like. In the first year of operations at the ranch, eight research projects got underway and more are being planned. The projects cover a wide variety of topics from animal health to invasive weeds to monitoring plants and water quality and a study looking for the ideal range cow using space age technology. We're trying to find cattle that fit these rangeland systems, but also that will use uh, the rangeland sustainably and will have minimal impacts. Using GPS collars and accelerometers, Sprinkle is tracking how cattle use the range, how much they eat, how much they travel, how much they rest and sleep, etc. The more efficient cows don't need as much to eat and graze in the upland areas where ranchers want them to graze. The less efficient cows eat more forage each day and tend to be lazy, staying in the creek bottom instead of hiking to the uplands. We're looking for the ideal cow. Mother cows with more efficient characteristics could be bred with bulls to improve the efficiency of a cow herd, Sprinkle says. This research that I'm going to be describing to you is some of the first research of its kind in the world. Another study at Rock Creek is looking at the impact of cattle grazing on wet meadow habitat where sage grouse like to raise their broods. Using electric fence, they created six five and a half acre pastures and put different numbers of cattle in the pastures to consume forage and track the results. They will look at various levels of grass utilization and how that might affect sage grouse broods and cattle weight gain. All of these studies are exciting to working ranchers like Gerald Raymond, board president of the Idaho Cattle Association. This ranch benefits wildlife, it benefits livestock, and it benefits those alliances that, that we have uh, with, the, with the sportsmen, with the education, and, and with the communities that are surround this area. The research that's being done is gonna, is gonna enhance what we know uh, about how livestock react to different scenarios and situations, as well as how wildlife react uh, to those scenarios and situations. So I, I think there's a misperception in, the, in that uh, livestock and, and, uh, and wildlife can't commingle. They actually can commingle and actually complement each other. And the research that's being done on, on this facility is going to validate that. The fact that, the fact that we can utilize a resource uh, at certain times and, and have that resource still be viable and, and enhanced for endangered species and for wildlife. Now that research, education, and conservation are moving ahead at Rock Creek Ranch, it's rewarding for the people involved to see things moving ahead. Just really excited about the project. You know, it's a dream come true. 20 years ago, I walked this ranch, saw how impressive it was, and saw potential then, and you know, sometimes patience and persistence, and 20 years later, starting to realize that dream. So couldn't happen without great partners, but it's, it's fabulous. 
it's a you know it's a it's a gift to this community that uh, will be hard to replicate and really is a legacy for the Rinker family and we all are so deeply appreciative of what they've done uh, toward that end. Just so proud to be a part of a, a bigger project. It wouldn't be possible if it wasn't from all the different partners involved. And the future of that of that property, I think, is much grander than we ever could have imagined. And the university brings a big part, you know, of that. And I'm really excited about the future. <laughs>